Meldrum. I hear you want to speak with me. Yeah, I do. Can I get in? Yeah, OK, I'll have a talk, as long as uh, you only ask the questions and don't answer them as well. Oh, fair enough, Doc. Well, now, listen, you just got back from, uh, from America and from England. How yes. did it go over there, especially in the US? Well, it was, <coughs> it was excellent. We'd, we had about uh, five weeks in America. Uh, we did um, a loop around the major cities and up through the Midwest, um, based mostly on, on where radio was picking the, the album up. Right. And, um, by the time we finished, um, we had Portland and Seattle with sellout um, mm. concerts, which in a new country was, was uh, really exciting. Well, yeah, what's it like playing to American audiences as opposed to Australian ones? Especially well, for the first time when they hardly know you. Sure. The big difference was that they didn't know the, the songs or the lyrics that well, but, um, but they were there for, uh, for a rock and roll night, you know, which is oh. the same as, as Australian audiences. So, um, in a way, the the biggest surprise for me was that they weren't so different. Now, um, I've got to ask you this. Why did you have to change your name for America? Uh, yeah, um, basically a straight out uh, legal situation. There's a band there called Angel. Right. Um, and you can't trade under a name that's confusing. And from our point of view, we didn't want to be confused with them. Now, let's go on to Dark Room, the new album. Um, right. What progression do you feel it's made from, say, no exit face to face? Okay, um, one major one is, <coughs> is in the production itself. John and Rick had a lot to do with that. And um, the, uh, the other albums have been very guitar-oriented right. and very uh, hard. So we thought we'd look at some different sounds. Um, Rick plays keyboards on the album. Which brings me to the point, will you have to do that on stage? I mean, will you introduce it? Sure, keyboards we've got keyboards on, on stage now. Yeah. Rick's playing it. We're doing um, Dark Room on stage now. Right. It's going over really well, too. All right. Uh, in your songs, um, Dice comes up a lot. Yeah. Um, is, your, is your life see, lived by the dice? I, I read I, these things I, in have the you, songs. Have you see? read that book, The Dice Man? Yes, it's I have. the person who throws the dice, and every right. day he lives his life by that. Um, that fascinated me that somebody would do that, and I suppose um, that fascination comes up. Um, in a lot of your songs, like there's a lines like, she throws her dice, give me the sound of a rolling dice, to take a chance on a loaded dice. Yeah, you've found more uh, things about dice than I'd have thought we put in. Yeah, um, there's a lot of, well, there's other things, sure. like mirror or looking glass. I, I mean, I'm fascinated by the way you do write songs. That's, that's, um, I, I suppose for us, it really is, uh, the chance aspect, you know. Um, I used to really like uh, paintings and and even some music, like uh, John Cage and that. I mean, he walks on stage and throws his music in the air, and picks it up and he has page one and page eleven and page fourteen and page two right. and plays it like that. It's it's just that uh, element right. of unpredictability, you know. And, and uh, I guess that fascinates. Well, now I mean, with this interview, uh, you tend to, uh, to read a lot about the angels. Um, about their success. Uh, we've never really had a chance to do an interview. Uh, and yet, really, basically, when I thought about it, one doesn't know much about you guys at all. Is that the way you've wanted it to be all the time? Um, that your music say it for you? Basically, yeah. Um, this, I don't see a lot of, of uh, merit in uh, talking beyond what we, what we do. Mm. Um, I find bands sometimes, or, or artists, stand around and say, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, and then they break a leg and nothing happens. Mm. Um, what, where we begin, we began the band, really, to write songs. Right. And, and that's uh, uh, what, where we uh, begin and end. Did it worry you the, um, the, I mean, the main point the success is, is in it the comes fame? out of the songs success and the fame. fame that, that came over the next two years, you know, that you were always in demand, that the, the records were selling, you are getting, you know. That's the kind of problem a band likes to have. Yeah. But it, did, it, did, did it infringe on your private life? Because I always felt that sometimes you'd sort of look and think, now, don't I'm, ask about my private life. I'm very life. conscious of, of my privacy. Right. Um, which is why I haven't really spoken to a, a lot of um, media people. Right. Um, and, and so I, I really... Um, like to to keep that side to myself. All right, the live uh, side of the Angels. Uh, you don't go overboard with lights. They're very tastefully done. It's always sort of in darkened images, and then they burst out. And there's a lot of energy 
from yourself on stage, uh, whereas with Rick there tends to sort of be the coolness and that, or well, with the rest of the group. Uh, is that the way that you wanted to see the group become? The thing about everybody on stage, Rick standing still, you know, I like to dance, and everybody else uh, moving around, is, is that we're basically uh, doing what we each prefer to do. Right. Um, Rick, uh, you know, would much rather concentrate on his guitar than, than move around like some sort of, you know, uh, pseudo Keith Richard or something right. like that, you know, I mean, he's very comfortable doing that. Actually, I have to laugh sometimes, is when, when you go to a, a, a disco or a dance place and your records come on and you see people suddenly go into an angel's routine and it's either leaping up in the air and throwing their hands in front of them like that, yeah. or it's just standing perfectly still and pretending to play a guitar no and just between, oddly no. staring around the room. No, there's no... Yeah, between. we've got some people actually who watch Rick very closely to see if his eyebrows move. <laughs> it's, it's weird. They're, they're so intent. So what can we look forward to over the next 12 months with, well, from the Angels? American influence, do you think? No. No, I don't think that's really uh, very valid for us. Um, we... I mean, we've... We've had a lot of American influence and a lot of British influence mm. in our songs so far. Um, personally, I think um, Australia, the overall feel in Australian music is a lot more gutsy mm. than what's happening in America. Um, we'll be touring a lot, but we're still using Australia as our base. Right. Yeah, well, OK, Doc, is there any more secrets I can get out of you about yourself and the Angels? Oh, well, then again, of course, you've got no secrets at all, really, have you? Yeah, One. that's it. What's it? You answered the question. Now you're going to have to leave Oh, now, the come car. on. Now, hold on. Now, that's what we agreed to, him. You're going to have to exit. But, oh, fair enough. Okay. Driver, stop the car, please. Oh, we did agree on that. Yeah, fair enough. I mean, I, I, I didn't realise... You talked over the top of it. Yeah, see what you might... Yeah, fair enough. OK, all right. Thanks, Doc. Anyhow. Why don't you go back to your dark room?